Hey, hey everyone, Felix from Nintendo Life here. And sometimes you boot up a game and everything just works. You immerse yourself into the experience and it's game of the year material. But other times you've heard that a game is game of the year material, but you just can't get into it. You maybe try it one, two, three times and then on the fourth try, it finally clicks. Well, these are the games that I personally didn't really click with at first, but then after giving it a couple of hours and just leaving the game for a bit and coming back to it a year later, I understood the hype. We're going to go through six of these games and the first one on the list is Hollow Knight. So I had a friend at school who was playing this game and just said, dude, you need to play this game. So he was really kind and lended me his copy on Steam and I booted it up. And I didn't like it. I think I played it for around an hour and nothing was really talking to me. I didn't understand the appeal. And I think the biggest reason I wasn't enjoying it was I was playing with a keyboard. And this game is much better played with a controller. Now, I had been told that at the time, but I couldn't get my controller to work on Steam. So I thought, ah, I might come back to this game later. But for now, yeah, this game, it's just not for me. A year or so later, I got myself a brand new Xbox Series X and I tried out the service called Game Pass. One of the games on Game Pass was Hollow Knight, so I thought, okay, screw it, let's try it again. I can now play with a controller and I had a much better experience this time around. It wasn't my favorite game of all time, but I understood why this game could appeal to certain people. I think I got the first ending and that was that, but I felt something was missing and what was missing was that I could play it anywhere. Hollow Knight on the Switch is just the perfect match and I was playing it everywhere I went. I played it in bed, I played it on the toilet, I played it on my roof. No, I didn't play it on my roof. The world building, the characters, the music, playing this with headphones especially really helped me just immerse myself into the experience. I love how it introduces new stuff the further you progress down in Hollow Knight. The, the more you progress, the more you're just gonna love it. This is a Metroidvania in its purest form. This time around, I did much more. I finished the Colosseum, even though that took a million tries. I did the Path of Pain, which took a bajillion tries, but doing those kind of stuff is just so rewarding. You always feel like, yeah, I, I could do this, but it's gonna be a tough time because Hollow Knight is a hard game. Don't let it fool you with its cute visuals. No, it's, it's a souls like I would say, because these bosses, you're gonna die again and again until you learn the movements and defeat the bosses. I could be talking about Hollow Knight for an entire video, but we have five other games to talk about. So going from one night to another night, we have Shovel Knight. Now Shovel Knight I bought fairly early on in my Switch's life cycle. I think it was one of the first games I actually got. I mean, speaking of Hollow Knight being hard, Shovel Knight for me was insanely tough. I kept dying again and again and you go quite a bit back when you die. I didn't really understand the mechanics that you could go into town and use food to upgrade your health and upgrade your magic. I didn't even know what magic was. I didn't know you could upgrade your armor. There was so much I just didn't pick up on. And yeah, I put the game down quite quickly. But even though I didn't quite enjoy the game a lot on Switch, I still picked it up on the 3DS when the eShop was closing. And here, the game clicked. I really loved how the 3D effect separated the pixel art layers. It, I mean, it's the kind of thing that you need to experience to see just how cool it is. I myself am a real sucker for the 3D effect, but it felt like an enhanced port of Shovel Knight because Shovel Knight on the Switch just seems like a NES game. You know, it was what it was trying to do, but here it, it looked like the visuals were much cleaner because of the 3D effect. It was absolutely magical. And there I, picked up on all the mechanics, I leveled up, I got magic, I got good armor, I beat the bosses. Absolutely wonderful. I couldn't put the game down from when I started to when I finished the game, and I just finally understood why this game was getting all this high praise from everyone. The next game though is now in my top three games of all time, but when I started it, I was really struggling. It is The Witcher 3. Now The Witcher 3 has a really funky fighting style. It's, it's a bit clunky if you don't really know what you're doing. I Now I love the combat style, but starting, I was really not a fan of it 
The whole white orchard section is just a bit, it is not as great as the rest of the game. It is very, I mean, it's a tutorial area, but it is when you enter Velen for the first time. So you get past the tutorial section that you really see, man, I'm in for something special. You do the Baron quest and suddenly you think, I'm in for something spectacular. And then you keep going, you go to Skellig, you go to Novikrat. And it just keeps going. You have all these choices that will affect how the game plays out. I mean, it's no Baldur's Gate, but at the time I was playing this, I had not tried anything like it. I just love that this game just keeps going. You think, am I ever going to finish this game? And you might not, because when you're done with the game, there's two magnificent DLCs, especially Blood and Wine. You need to play that if you've played just any The Witcher, because it is essentially just a brand new game. You have a whole new area which is completely different from the barren wasteland of Velen. It is this magical fairy tale kingdom-esque thing where everything is just so sunny, beautiful, you have new music, new characters. The Witcher 3 is just one of the best games I've ever played and the funny thing is initially you know I wasn't really enjoying the game and I was even searching on reddit why is The Witcher 3 so overrated because I just couldn't understand the hype and then I did. So maybe you're in the same section. I know it's a game that some people just struggle to get into. And I think it's mainly the white orchard section, which can just be a bit daunting. You have this big fight with a griffin and it can be really tough if you don't know what you're doing, but just get past that, get to the bloody Baron and you will see why this game is so magical. Now, I think the game I struggled the most getting into, the game that I played the most without understanding the hype until the last section is a game called Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds is a very fascinating and original experience. There's nothing quite like it. Outer Wilds is a game that rewards you with knowledge of the game. So if you know what you're doing in the game, you can just go and complete it initially. But because you don't know what you need to do to get there, that is the beauty of it. You go explore this solar system and I'm not going to spoil anything because you need to go into this game blind, otherwise it ruins you the experience. But you're an astronaut going around this solar system trying to uncover secrets about something. I'm trying to keep it very vague here. Now, doing the playthrough, I of course thought, yeah, this game, I can understand why it's good. I don't think it's one of the best games ever made. But then I get to the final scene of the game and it's the kind of scene that for me at least, changed how I view upon life. Now, at the time I was going through a really tough period in my life and seeing this just completely changed how I looked upon everything, which is not a lot of games can have that, like that statement. This game changed how I look upon life, but it really did. And you know, you probably know what section it is that I'm talking about if you've played the game. It's, a, it's the section with a lot of numbers. That's all I'm gonna say. But yeah, Outer Wilds, absolutely fantastic experience, which is really hard to get into. Even though I loved it, I don't think it's the kind of game that everyone will enjoy because it is tedious in places. It's the kind of game that a lot of people will have trouble getting into, but everyone who's finished the game will understand why it's so great. I can't really talk much about it without spoiling it. So let's move on to the fifth game of games I regret not loving sooner, and it's Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. This game is quite fascinating because I really liked it in my first playthrough, but then suddenly I just put the game down when I reached Sword Valley. I think I was just getting a bit bored, if that makes sense. And Sword Valley is quite a long while into the game, but I basically stopped at the worst possible time because after that, things just start going off the rails. It is, you know, if you've watched Attack on Titan, and you watch the first season and you think, okay, I know where this is going. And then you watch the rest of the series and you think, man, I had no idea where this was going. It's kind of like Xenoblade Chronicles, I feel. And especially after getting past Sword Valley, I can, I would recommend you, you do that if you consider putting the game down. Because I got this game at launch. I waited until midnight to play it. I had heard so much good stuff about it and it was my first encounter with Xenoblade Chronicles. And I sat at all with the title screen. I was almost tearing up. So you think, oh, wait, why did you put the game down? Didn't you love it? I, th I thought it was okay. But the combat wasn't really dwelling with me and the visuals were really distracting somehow. The way that all the animations were really clunky I never reached the point in my first playthrough where I could just overlook that, as silly as that sounds. But a couple of years later, I thought, hey, I need to give this game a proper go and not just give up on it halfway through because it was a good game. 
but it isn't until that you play it through its entirety that you that you can see just the magical thing that it is. In this playthrough though, everything connected with me much more and much earlier. I did so much more than I didn't do in my first playthrough and oftentimes that just helps that experience being a lot better. Xenoblade Chronicles is a really big, a really grandiose original story that you need to see to the end because it has some plot twists that you would never see coming. It has a lot of wonderful characters, a lot of wonderful music. And of course you can overlook the clunky animations. I know I did. Yeah, the first one I was just, why do they walk like that? Why do they jump like that? The second time around, yeah, that's uh, that sort of stuff. I was not even giving it a second thought. So yeah, that was my experience with Xenoblade Chronicles. Absolutely fantastic game. But the last game that I regret not loving sooner is a game that I tried out multiple times. And now last week I started a playthrough, which I am wholeheartedly enjoying. And the game is Dragon Quest XI. But before we talk about that game, I just want to pay my respects to Akira, who made the wonderful designs for the Dragon Quest franchise. He unfortunately passed away last week at the early age of 68 years old and it was so beautiful to see the internet just come together and honor the legend that he is. Now personally I didn't have much exposure to his works. I didn't watch Dragon Ball because when I was a kid down in Spain I was watching an episode and suddenly the earth exploded and I was traumatized and Dragon Quest I never picked that up before last week, just before he died. And what I'm trying to get at here is just that I find it very touching that even in his last moments of his life, there were still people discovering his works for the first time. Rest in peace, Akira. You will be dearly missed. So going back to Dragon Quest XI, this is a JRPG in its purest form. It's probably the JRPG I would recommend to people who haven't played a JRPG before because it's a bit simple at its core, but it's wonderful for being that way. So it doesn't have a bajillion side quests like in Xenoblade Chronicles, for example. It has a few in each location that are fairly simple to figure out the combat. There's not a lot of different spells and stuff you have to really think about, at least initially. You have, you know, you have a fire spell which you can cast on one enemy and you have a fire spell which you can cast on multiple different enemies and the characters are lovable and they get introduced in a really nice pace. The story, although it shares some troops that we have seen in previous games before, it does some stuff that you might not expect which is really nice. I am really really liking Dragon Quest XI and yeah, I completely forgot to talk about why I didn't play it sooner. So like with Hollow Knight, I played Dragon Quest initially on Game Pass. And although I thought it was quite good, I couldn't understand the hype behind it initially. I thought it was too simple. But after playing some really complex or big games, coming back to Dragon Quest on the Switch, where I can just play it before I go to bed and stuff, stuff clicked. I don't know what else to tell you. Sometimes a game just needs a bit of time in the oven before it becomes the delicious cake that it is. But what are some games that didn't initially click with you? Some games that you had to put in a handful of hours to just start multiple times before you understood the hype? Well, let me know down in the comments. That was everything from me. Stay safe, play some video games, even if you might not enjoy them at first, you might end up loving them at last, and we'll see you in the next one. Felix from Nintendo Life, out. Oh.